Uh, well, I'm Jane Fleener from North Carolina State University, and, and this paper is, or this presentation is, is sort of a um, connection with a couple of articles here. And if you want to email me, I'll be glad to, uh, you know, send you these slides. Um, I'm also very big on visual metaphors, and, and this leads in nicely from the idea of how do you have transformational change. And, and as Wittgenstein said, you can't really have you know, a change of aspect until you have a change of language and a change of language requires sort of uh, emerging metaphors. So this, this first slide is, is my, my metaphor for getting on the train and leaving the station of modernism. And so we, we are leaving this station. And what I want to do really briefly is talk a little bit about, you know, some, some ideas about blockchain, um, how blockchain could be disruptive for education to create transformational change. Uh, I also want to talk a little bit about a futures mind shift, which is developing understanding for futures literacies, which interestingly, Rail Miller, who is a futures literacy person, is presenting at the same time we are. So, um, uh, so that's kind of sad that, that we're missing that uh, audience. And then the, the third uh, thing I want to do really briefly is talk a little bit about changing metaphors uh, for transformational change. If you haven't seen these uh, three reports, the Work Technology 2050 report by the Millennium Project, uh, the UNESCO report on reimagining futures and the new social contract for education, and the United Nations report on transforming our world, um, I think those are really key reports to look at. And, and I kind of build off of those uh, in this presentation in my sort of vision about what the future of work is and how that relates to the future of learning. Um, the future of learning needs for me um, come, I, you know, I'm an educator. I've been an educator, um, K-12, higher education. I now work with adult learners. And one of the uh, shifts I think in, in ideas about learning are the need for things, it's called pervasive learning, learning at the speed of need. And one of the challenges with learning now is not so much that we need better formal learning, but we are shifting to more informal and social learning. At the same time, learning theory becomes really important from the perspective of lifelong learning. So it's no longer about learning to get a job. It's learning for life, it's learning throughout life. And those, I think, go behind um, a lot of what I'm going to say here about learning shifts. Um, John Seeley Brown is a technology uh, learning theorist who also describes a little bit about how uh, learning is shifting from something that happens individually, you know, sort of the, the person who has all the knowledge who can do really well on Jeopardy to more collective shared values and beliefs, uh, participation in shared learning experiences and activities, uh, very contextually situated learning to create and solve um, real world problems, but also supporting uh, play and imagination. Um, the Millennium Project, when looking at the world of work in 2050, I think this is part of the vision of how we think about technology in the future uh, work will be more meaningful, uh, more um, social collaboration or social contribution will be more valued, uh, more self-employment, uh, which is, I think is really key, uh, augmented capabilities and self-actualization. So the world of work is changing as well. So we have a role not only in preparing people for this changing world for work, but in shaping this world of work in the future. So blockchain, I think, becomes a nice disruptor. And you know, when, when Nick was talking about um, sort of some of the ways of transforming uh, society, I think one way you do it is to disrupt. And uh, blockchain has a potential to be very disruptive to the educational system. I'm not gonna have time to really go into what blockchain is, but basically it's like a great big ledger system that has distributed users with multiple interlocking uh, copies. And um, we, we most often associate blockchain with cryptocurrencies, which I still don't understand. 
Uh, but there are a lot of changes and disruptions, for example, in the art world with uh, NFTs in uh, blockchain um, um, resources that are changing how people even think about how you show work, works of art, how you own works of art, what works of art can even be. So, so already we're seeing blockchain disrupt a lot of different areas of society. Um, so go with me on this journey for a second um, and think about lifelong learning and adaptive education as a disruptor to traditional education. So think of, of for example, this um, blockchain here that has um, lifelong learning as a way of demonstrating competency, skills, dispositions, interests, passions, you know, your desires to make a difference in the world in multiple ways. So instead of having to go to this university to get a transcript or to, you know, this provider to go get your uh, CEUs, um, you have a resource or a location where you can share your lifelong experiences that demonstrate your passions, your commitments, your different ways of showing expertise. And those different ways of showing expertise actually allow you to, to be very creative. So for example, let's say you're an influencer, which who knew that was even a thing. And now as an influencer, you want to be able to, you know, work with an organization and say, here's how I can demonstrate, you know, my impact and how my strategies have worked. And, and that becomes part of your lifelong learning blockchain profile that you can share with different people. So blockchain as a disruptor has the opportunity and the challenge to formal education systems where education no longer needs to be front loaded. That is everything existing in a formal education setting. It certainly disrupts assessment accountability and credentialing, not only with who owns it, but those are huge businesses and uh, disrupting the business of accountability, credentialing and assessment is going to be a huge transformation for education. Um, I think you know this kind of disruption has the potential to level the playing field as well. So, for example, you know you no longer need to show your academic credentials as I'm from Harvard or I have you know this outstanding uh, pedigree, academic pedigree, but you can you can put together your own lifelong learning profile to demonstrate your passions and your abilities and your skills. Um, and so I think this, this as a potential way of disrupting um, can, can honor this holistic uh, approach to thinking about uh, competencies. Um, so I mentioned about metaphors and I think with, from a perspective of metaphors, um, at first, this is a Nautilus by the way, and, and a Nautilus is an interesting, um, creature because as, as it grows, it leaves this hard shell behind and, uh, but has this more pliable, emergent, dynamic, interactive, soft shell. And so as, as we look at the metaphors and myths of modernism for power and growth and hierarchies, you know, that is still a part of, of this hard shell past. But um, with, with virtual reality and robotics and pace of change and widening economic and social gaps and global warming, we have these perturbations that I think are pushing us out into this outer shell. And, and that kind of goes to the, um, um, what are those little crabs called that um, they, they, they upshell and, and a lot of animals upshell, that is they outgrow their shell and they go and they find a new shell. Sorry to interrupt Dr. Saying, Fleener, but we're right at 10 minutes. Yes, and, and this is my, yeah. So, so this upshell opportunity is, is an opportunity for changing metaphors and that is actually it. So thank you so much.